Right. Yeah. She brings a cardboard box marked popcorn. She just ran over to the concession stand in her kitchen. She comes back and there's this tiny, thin little layer of popcorn in the bottom of it. Yeah, this is the classic example of the ninth tank and props won't refill the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's all drive to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the devil comes dancing through doing that? That would have been the best. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema, or we get the hose again. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Halloween spectacular! Yeah, again, with the <laughs> fucking taculars. Yeah, all right, all right. We're now we're recording this way in advance, so we're actually doing this in, like, August. August. So, the, yeah, this, but this will be the second week of the spooktacular, I guess. I uh, and also joining us this week, returning guest masochist, comedian, and improv artist Rebecca Vigil. Rebecca, welcome back. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be back. Are you really though? Because like you know what you're getting <laughs> no, into at this point. No, no, I hate this. <laughs> I hate every minute. <laughs> oh, we got a good one for you today, though. So, uh, so tell us, Rebecca, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, we watched "Along Came the Devil." Which is a scary family drama made by white pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It, there will be so many moments of child sexualization for no reason that never lead to anything in this movie. <laughs> yep. It's Te Jeffrey Epstein, co-producer of Along Came the Devil, ladies and gentlemen. And they're all blonde. They're all blonde. <laughs> they are all blonde. Yep. Fox News. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Epstein has a type, apparently. And Eli... Yeah. How bad was this movie? Well, if you love The Exorcist, but you're tired of those unrealistic demonic body standards, <laughs> you will love this movie. I I I'm going to talk about the, the single greatest thing about this movie in a moment, but it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to okay, spoil it. All right. Well, let's, <laughs> well, let's not make anybody wait there any longer than they have to. We'll cut straight to it. Is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best, worst, ham-fisted use of every horror movie trope ever. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's like they had a checklist of all horror movie tropes, and they just, like, randomly dispersed them throughout yeah, the script. Yeah, I, I figured yeah. somebody went to, like, all the horror movie storyboards of all time and says, if it shows up in more than three, I want it in my fucking movie. Just line <laughs> them up together, and that's our script. Yes, and without any sense to it whatsoever. Yeah, right, ever. right. Yeah, nothing ever goes anywhere. There's never any reason for that thing to have been in the mirror or anything. Right. Yeah, that thing to have walked in front of the or that thing yeah. to have fallen down. Yeah, every goddamn yeah. thing. What woods? Just walking yeah, into just... woods? <laughs> no goddamn reason. No I'm frightened. Reason. I guess I'll walk into these dark woods alone. That'll yeah. help. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so I was going to go with best, worst, who and where the fuck are these people? Okay, so <laughs> there's an early on transition. So the movie starts off with a, you know, 10 years ago flashback or whatever of a young girl with her older daughter. And then it cuts to 10 years later and we have an older girl and an older woman. And they're not the same people exactly, <laughs> right? Like, so why do that to us? Why, like, leave us all going, okay, but who the fuck is who? Uh, yes. <laughs> and, and at the very least, like, a better writer would automatically recognize that as a problem and have them use each other's names over and over again in this opening scene, right? Yeah. And, and at least talk about where they are and why they're there. But no, not this stupid fucking movie. It's left to me to go back in my notes and go, oh, that's Aunt Tanya. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I see. I yeah, I don't think they read the script after they wrote it. Right, I think yes. They just wrote it. Hurry, make it. Make it quick. <laughs> we can't read back through this, guys. We're out of Coke. Right. <laughs> and Eli, I have a feeling I know what your best worst is going to be. See, now I was going to go with best worst devil, but that gets into the surprise and my favorite part of the movie. So okay. I'm going to switch at the last minute and I'm going to go with best worst twist ending. <laughs> okay. 
I'm not going to spoil it, but the ending of this movie not only negates the entire movie, it negates, like, moviedom itself. We will get to it, but the ending of this movie, which it wants you to be like, oh, the whole time, if you think about it at all, makes everything that happens leading up to it silly and ridiculous. Yep. Yep. As if it already wasn't. Yeah, yeah. right. Sillier and more ridiculous somehow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of rooms to walk slowly through in the near dark on the other side of the break, so we're going to keep things brief, but when we come back, we'll dive into all the near porn that is Along Came the Devil. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Possession 101. I'm Balthazar, the forbidden one who knows the rain and the blood. Uh, but please, just call me Balthazar. Uh, Mr. The Forbidden One Who Knows the Rain and the Blood was my father. Okay, so today... We're going to be learning the very first step in possession, sneaking behind people. Now, when you first approach your victim, the best way to get into their body is to sort of, you know, follow them around. And then, like, you'll be in the mirrors and stuff when they look at them and you can dis- I'm sorry. Yes. Question. Sorry. How does that help us possess people? Oh, uh, well, OK. So, you, you know, they're they're like. They'll be walking around their house, and then they look out a window, and then just barely in the reflection, you're right behind them. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we get what what you do. How does that help us actually enter their body and damn their souls? That I think that um, was the question. Well, uh, you know, it's it's spooky. It's uh, spooky. Got it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what if we sent them hate mail? Don't get ahead of me. Okay. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a Bible quote. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen: Demons can take any desired appearance, even that of an angel of light. <laughs> Don't believe anything Joseph Smith says. <laughs> I just love that this, like, it starts off with a quote from a book that people will say is true with straight faces that paraphrases to... The world is filled with shape-shifting monsters. Good luck. (laughs) Question. Will this ever have anything to do with anything that happens in the movie? Or am I crazy? Okay, good. (laughs) No. It was just the first Bible quote they could find with the word demon in it. (laughs) And and now we get the exposition novel screen. Oh, my God. We get a wall (laughs) of text that is written... Like, C.S. Lewis would be like, all right, I have no idea what you're talking about, man. Can you just make this? Whomst <laughs> are knowing of their father whose sister is in the left side. Of- it's a word puzzle, damn it. <laughs> it really and is. based on true events? Oh, right. Right. No, that flashes what? on under the fucking uh, the title real quick and then disappears like they were hoping we wouldn't notice. It. Yeah. But we should. The but... Bible isn't even based on true events. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's pretty important we keep in mind that this thing is supposed to be based on true events throughout this movie. Yeah. I mean. All right. So let me see what I can do about breaking down that gigantic five <laughs> paragraphs of exposition. This thing tries to introduce us into uh, to five characters. Only two of them will matter, right? Okay, so it introduces us to Sarah, who is dead before the movie starts. Ashley, who is the main character. Jordan, who is Ashley's sister, who will never appear in the movie, <laughs> right? Like she's in that opening scene in, in like 10 years ago, young Jordan or whatever, but then she will never show up again. Tanya, the other character we'll need to know, and an unnamed abusive dead. All five of those in the fucking exposition screen thing. Yeah. And then we open on what I thought was uh, the sounds of squirrels fucking in a closet. <laughs> but, but no, it's it's children giggling for about a minute of pan in. <laughs> yes. So creepy. The pedophile shit begins, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right away. You know, I want my movie to start with two little girls in a closet. What? Really close to each other's faces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess older sister is telling younger sister about how awesome mom was before she died. Well, she tells her that she wore a blue dress and the same necklace every day. Yeah. Or to be like, yeah, she's she smelled pretty dead. I'm not going to tell. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. 
Sarah Haversham was her name, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, and then <laughs> abusive dad storms in to begin his accent tour of the British Isles. <laughs> Right, he starts off Irish because he's drunk. He ends up like a like in somewhere in London, I think. Ends at a Pennsylvania coal miner. It's very <laughs> confusing. <laughs> but but basically, he wants them to stay in their closet so that he can have sex with a lady. I cannot emphasize strongly enough: this will never have anything to do with the rest of the movie. The movie makers just wanted to be like, and then he fucks in front of his kids. <laughs> I need to yep. dedicate about 12 minutes of this movie to fucking in front of your kids. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's wild. Because th throughout the rest of the movie, I was trying to make sense of why it opened this yes. way. Yes. <laughs> right. Why did we need any of this information? But yeah, dad's abusive. He's locking his daughters in the closet so he can bang some girl in the bedroom that they're in the closet of, right? Yeah. And it just like continues the sexualizing women for no apparent reason like that showing this other woman that he's about to have sex with like her ass and like His side <laughs> boob so, yeah yeah it's so weird yeah no it's just preparing you for the themes of the film i think in yeah. a lot of ways yeah <laughs> we're gonna get some side boob there's gonna be some child <laughs> abuse you're gonna be scared buckle in everybody we're making uh, it to hulu i'm so hard <laughs> All right, so then late that night, Jordan, the older sister, awakens to a demonic voice calling to her, right? So she wakes up, and Ashley, her younger sister, isn't in the punishment closet anymore. <gasps> so she has to, like, wander out against Dad's wishes out of the closet and into the room to go get her daughter. And that's when fuck buddy lady sees the two daughters, and has an entirely reasonable reaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yes. Her reaction is, oh my God, you had daughters in the closet while we were having sex? That's pretty fucked up, and she leaves. Uh -huh. But I couldn't get over the fact that before that, we were supposed to believe that she was, what, sleeping in that bra and panties? Like, an, oh, a nice, comfortable <laughs> bra sleep? Really? <laughs> that was your sleeping gear there? And and she had to have put it back on? Yeah, because... after, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to go to the bathroom indecent. Here we go. Let's put on this this corset and these garters so I can go take a a midnight dump. <laughs> yeah, but other, well, of course we obviously had to go with that because otherwise she'd just be in a t shirt or something normal, right? Or naked? <laughs> yeah. Well, right, right. Yeah. In in the real world, yeah. But okay, right. yeah. So she storms off, and that means that the children must be beaten. Because I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. End of scene, end of plot line. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yes, really. None of that will ever factor back into the film in any way. Yeah. So now we cut to 10 years later. <laughs> and second movie later. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 10 years and one film later. <laughs> yeah, because again, we are now cutting to one of the characters who will not be named until another scene and an entirely different character who was not mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll fill you in. You, you know, we'll do you more favors than the filmmakers did us. This is Ashley, the younger of the two daughters. Her older sister is off to college, will never appear in the film. And she is now living with her aunt, Tanya. Those are the two characters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and this is how clumsily they open the dialogue. Hey, you didn't sleep in your bed last night. Is something wrong? And she goes, oh, you know, it was shaking. And there are no follow-up <laughs> questions. Nope. And Tanya's like, yeah, no, beds will do that. They just shake <laughs> you in the middle of the night. <laughs> Yeah, those damn sleep number beds, you know? <laughs> Did you put a quarter in it? If you put a quarter in it, the motherfuckers... Only goes for like 10 minutes, though. <laughs> yeah, and it's okay, so Aunt Tanya is trying to talk Ashley into going to church with her, but Ashley has better things to do, like staple things to your face. Like, anything would be better, really. <laughs> I wrote in my notes here, you want to come to church or you want to get eaten by a demon? Okay, yeah, no, whatever, it's up to you. Oh, yeah. And okay, so so Tanya leaves to go to church and then Ashley makes tea. We're going to watch the whole making of the, the tea. The whole making process. You know these directors sat around and they were like, guys, water takes 10 to 12 minutes to boil. I will not have any 
shortcuts in this film. Right. <laughs> This is also the first, like, how do pop scares work moment in the movie where we watch her leave the room and then a picture falls over and then she picks it up, brings another picture to replace it. And the soundtrack and the camera are sure it's terrifying. But yeah. I was just like, yep, stuff falls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tea gets made. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so we watched that we we watched this incredibly long, like following her around, waiting for the pop scare. And when the pop scare comes, it literally is no. I guess that picture fell down. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole thing. And then okay, but we we see her go upstairs to check out a sound or whatever, and then the uh, camera pans down to a broken picture frame. And it's like, yeah, no, we know, yeah, right? That's yeah. what that we heard the glass break, and we figured it was a picture. Yeah, the whole house shakes all the time. That's what we've heard. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> In a house where the bed shakes, how could the pictures be safe? Yes. <laughs> right, exactly. Wanted so badly for it to pan over and it's just like the devil in a moving outfit with a plate glass window. Oh, I'm going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell my supervisor. <laughs> all right, so now we cut over to church where Pastor Boy Band is talking about Jesus. Okay, Jesus. I have a very, very important question about the setup here, because the there is the preacher, there's the bishop guy on his right, and then there's just another fucking guy on his <laughs> left who's dressed like casual fucking Friday. What is that guy? Who is he? Uh, the Senate pro tempore? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know how any uh, of this works. <laughs> yeah, me either. But but this young preacher is the is the new priest that's taken over for the old reverend that's about to retire you know he's the sergeant murtaugh to the new preachers the young preachers rigs i guess so we have a little piece of his sermon then they go to the old reverend's office or whatever where they have a hey don't don't read my demonology books motherfucker don't don't <laughs> those are mine that's my stuff it's, it's demonology <laughs> small talk he's like so are you you into demons? And he's like, eh, went through a demon phase. <laughs> you know. Also, why is he dressed like a hitman? I, I, I guess the black know. suit with the black tie. That will never come back. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, let's 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 dig into why Catholic religious figures are dressed like that. Holy shit, right? Yeah, that could be no its own kidding. show right there. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so um, young preacher is reading old preacher's exorcism books. Old preacher freaks out, goes over there, pisses on him like a cat, you know. Um, says, put it back. <laughs> that's not. That's for the third act, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're rushing the story. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that much. That's why we had to put that weird kid fucking scene in the beginning. <laughs> Wanted to make that sweet, sweet hour and twenty minutes runtime yeah, right, get going. Right. Yeah, we've got three more scenes of tea. We got <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we cut over to Ashley. She's okay. Again, none of this is explained. Apparently, Ashley and her sister moved away from this town at some point for an extended period. And now she's back. Now that Jordan is in college or whatever, she's back to live in the town she grew up in. So she rides her bike over to see the old house that her and her sister got locked up in the punishment closet of. Right, but because we never got an external shot of this house, what we, the viewers, see is a character who we barely know and barely understand who she is go into, like, the world's second saddest open house and wander around <laughs> for six minutes. Well, you can tell this guy bought a house in Jersey. This is the second saddest, Eli. <laughs> I'm just saying, I hate it when you get to the open house before the real estate agent gets there. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. This is by far not the scariest open house I've been to. I'll just say that right now. I wish a demon would have snuck behind me at some of the open houses I went to. All right, so now it's time for the first of, I believe, 11 scenes in which Ashley's going to walk around looking for a pop scare and not find one. Yep. Yep. I mean, we have, like, evil shadows moving by. A thing falls down and makes a noise or whatever. Yeah, I just I just would, like, go boo at the screen <laughs> <laughs> just to help her out. <laughs> Well, you can tell they want to do horror movie here, right? Right, they, they right. Just, yes. 
It looks like they are, they had just, like we discussed in the beginning, they had just watched a bunch of trailers for horror <laughs> movies. And we're like, that's got to go in. Right. Go in. <laughs> but why would it go in, sir? Why? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Put it in. <laughs> it's like fucking house shook. We don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, at this point in my notes, I had to write, oh, that's Ashley. All white girls look the same to me, apparently. Yeah. And now we're going to meet another character. This is Hannah. Now, Hannah apparently was Ashley's friend when she was a little girl that lives nearby um, and hasn't seen her in forever. And now Hannah wanders in and she's like, Ashley, we're friends now. Yeah. Literally, she introduces herself by saying, you don't remember me, do you? Well, I don't remember you either. I just wrote in my notes, could someone tell me who the fuck you all are? Go to a mixer with name tags or something, please. Could, it, could someone tell them who they are? Yeah, right. But we also like, this is the brunette. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. The brunette white girl. So you, you know, know she's going to be into some demonic shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And she totally is. That's the next scene, yep. right? So they go, yep. they go over to like uh, to Hannah's house. Ashley walks into her bedroom and she goes, "Wow, it's a lot of fucked up demon shit you got on your walls." <laughs> and she goes, "Out." Of, I love this so much. She goes, "Yeah, I'm really into Mormonism right now." <laughs> <laughs> what, how do you feel about underwear over your underwear? You're into it, okay? Cool. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot in common. This is gonna be a great friendship. <laughs> in fact, she says. Mormons might be weird, but they're on to something. Oh my god! Which is they're the weird ones. <laughs> yeah, said the Catholic. Right, yeah, right. But that's the thing, though, right? That's what's so amazing about this movie is it was written by Catholics, and they're like, "Who's weird into the demons? Mormons." That's like Satanism. It? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then in this really weird meta moment, because this movie will blatantly rip off The Exorcist, Hannah says, have you seen The Exorcist? It's a great movie. Which again, like, kind of makes sense and is a meta moment in a horror movie that isn't going to literally line for line rip off The Exorcist later. Yeah, like, I right. wanted the priests later in the movie to be like, ha like The Exorcist. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay. Uh, I saw that movie. <laughs> yeah, that's why she mentioned it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, okay, so they talk a little bit about, you know, she's like, well, you know, if you ever get possessed by a demon in Act 2, you want to be prepared. And, you know, apropos of nothing. Also, you remember that nerdy kid that had a crush on you? He's super hot. He should be your love interest from this point on in the film. <laughs> I think we'll use him for exactly one act, and then he'll disappear and never come back. Oh, okay, cool. Disappear and never yeah, come back. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now we cut to uh, Tanya, the uh, the aunt coming home. And she sees, like, the pictures are all out of whack, and there's a Bible on the floor, like, demons have been about. Damn this shaky house. <laughs> <laughs> and again, she reacts to this, Not she looks at it like, oh, that's the weird way for Ashley to replace the pictures. I'll tell her yeah. you don't have to break them when you don't like them. You can just slide. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a fireman thing. You can yeah, it was, like, this character doesn't react to anything really I no. mean, later maybe but it takes a lot for her to react <laughs> like i wrote in the notes like picture broken check old bible check like, it's like... <laughs> everything's just where i left it yeah, yeah. It's exactly as it's supposed to be <laughs> all right so then ashley comes home with her new friend hannah a brunette <laughs> <laughs> And she tells Aunt Tanya that they're going to go hang out with uh, a couple of boys at the dock. And Tanya's like, all right, sounds like fun. <laughs> Bring protection. Don't be too late at the sex party, all right? Remember, look, you know, you can always cheat in a bowl party. Look to see what the general location someone's put their keys. You don't have yeah. to just settle for whoever you pull. Pick the most expensive looking car. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Jaguar in there. You pick the Jaguar key. It's easy. All right. So then, okay. <laughs> so... Ashley and Hannah are going to go out to this dock and hang out with some of the bad boys. But to get there, uh, you have to go through the creepy forest, right? Because you know how spooky woods. <laughs> <laughs> very often destinations have spooky woods between you and them. It's like that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I have to go through a creepy forest when I go to Dwayne Reed. Yeah. Right. Really, <laughs> right, right. right. No, I get it. Real pain. <laughs> oh, man. Just want one of those nice cookie boxes. It's fine. It's fine. I'll go for it. 
<laughs> also, this is where we are introduced to our first African American character, and Yay! I should point out only African American character who no, immediately. No, no, no. There's another one later, but they don't show their face. <laughs> oh, okay, so they exist. They just yeah. <laughs> so our our only faced Amer- African American character who introduces himself immediately as. Big Bryce. <laughs> yo, <God>. yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might as well, like, flip a chair. Well, right, honestly, like, come on, we know Christian writers. The fact that he wasn't T-Money is pretty much exactly. a step up. Yeah, Exactly. Yeah, so she, she uh, Hannah takes Ashley out to meet, takes her to a fucking Senka commercial or something. Here's my group of hot, racially mixed photogenic friends. Yeah, yeah. exactly. This is our college catalog. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and she's like, and here's your love interest, Sean. Yeah, it's so <laughs> so clumsy. Hello, it's been a while. I uh, we have a connection. We have almost nine people at this party. And another conversation that starts with, "Do you remember me?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Nope. <laughs> well, and and then she, like she starts. This is so good because it's an awkward conversation, but the writers and actors aren't smart enough to realize that. Because she's like, yeah, I remember you. How's your little turtle? And he's like, oh, dead, man. Because that was like <laughs> it was like 10 years ago. Like, uh, You think I'm still going to have that fucking turtle? <laughs> Myrtle uh, the turtle. I just wrote in my notes, this is where I killed myself. Sorry, guys. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> oh, well, now we're going to get to the point where I killed myself. Because that night, they decide to play with an EVP app. <laughs> okay. First of all. It's not in any way close to EVP. It nope. is a radar. It app. is. <laughs> that beeps. Yeah. That's not EVP. You see a little like ghost. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, a little icon. Bing. Approaching yeah. from the north side, Captain. They throw up a turbine <laughs> at it. So, yeah, but but while they're playing with the EVP app, I guess Ashley hears a demonic voice calling her name and she sees some momish, demonish stuff and she screams. Yes. Party foul. Yeah, right. And this is the point, the first amazing horror movie decision where she's like, you know what? I'm very scared. I want to wander back into those dark woods alone. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye myself. Also. Bryce is my hero in this moment. So they're all like, like they're all like, oh, why'd you scream like that? Blah, blah, blah. And then she gets up and wanders into the woods and they're like, Bryce. And Bryce's exact line is, quote, she's screaming. We're trying to have a nice, quiet evening. <laughs> 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 Bitches be crazy. <laughs> So, yeah, so she gets super scared um, and she wanders off into the woods where she starts hearing like noises and demon, but like the shit that they heard in the horror movie previews. Yes, <laughs> right. Exactly. And then a bad Halloween store employee is behind her. <laughs> and then, oh, and then she goes to run away. She gets really scared and she goes to run away, but she has to fall down. Yep, of course. <laughs> because otherwise there would be a horror movie trope left unturned. Yeah, they probably took it back. <laughs> Sorry, need you to. We really need you to fall there. <laughs> you can only fall in this movie. And then, okay, so but this, this scene ends with like that silly ass looking green bark monster behind yeah. her thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like not scary farm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you guys want a candy apple? No, man. Come on. <laughs> Can I just tell you you're too old to work here? Please don't tell me I'm too old to work here. <laughs> really wait for this all year. I know you do. <laughs> all right. So now we cut back home. Aunt Tanya's doing dishes and she goes to check on Ashley. Ashley's in the bathtub because otherwise she'd have clothes on. <laughs> just having a candle bath like you do. After a hard day, you light several dozen candles. And you have a nice <laughs> bubble bath. Yes. It's self-care. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You scream blood into the tub and everything. Yeah. No, I just, I'm, I'm always amazed by how many candles movie makers think that human beings are willing to light for ambiance, right? It's like whenever, like, you see a, a sex scene and there's, like, suddenly 400 candles lit. It's like, who the fuck stopped and lit 400 candles during foreplay? Do you know how long that would take? Right? <laughs> I mean, you guys have to know how long it would take because you actually lit those candles to make this scene happen. You had 11 guys doing that shit. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't film her slowly <laughs> yeah. lighting each of these candles. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, she makes tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then again, we get three useless horror movie tropes. The scary yeah. hands grab her out of the bath, the screaming blood, and the twas a dream trope. All of which will never matter nope. to the movie. No, nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Okay. And then we have the scene where like Aunt Tanya and her have the like aunt niece chat about her mom or whatever and about Jesus and the importance of being a Christian, which is really was really fucked up for me because it was at this point that I recognized Aunt Tanya as the actress that fucked the stuffed bear in Ted. Oh, right. So I'm being preached the gospel. By the chick that fucked this stuff, bear and Ted. There was just something weird about that for it's me. A step up for her. I'm proud of her. She moved. This moved actress was in Ted and had sex with Ted. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was Ted's oh. Ted's love interest. God, she has horrible taste. <laughs> yeah, and and I want to give Ashley credit here because she's like, you know, God never gives us more than we can handle. And Ashley's like, yeah, well, you know, God gave me an abusive dad who had sex in front of me, so maybe. And maybe, killed my mom. And- maybe you don't say that, right? Because yeah. what he gave you was that time you got in a bike accident, right? So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the horrible shame of your role in Ted, yeah. Right. He gave you a bad agent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, given her acting skills, the fact that she's in a movie at all oh. means she's got a hell of an agent. <laughs> Awful. That was my other oh, best my. worst, was yeah. best worst actress. Oh, my gosh. Oh, she was bad. Yes. All right. So late that night, we watch Ashley P. This Why? was I yeah. so thank you. No. So uncomfortable. I, had, I don't because again, know. <laughs> when, when we have Rebecca on our show, I'm always a little bit hyper aware of like because me and Rebecca don't talk a lot, so I'm always just like, what did I ask Rebecca to watch? And I'm just picturing her at home, and she's like, oh, cool. They invited me to watch a teenage girl pee. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you for having me on the child pornography. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then, of course, we get another useless, meaningless, or, or two or three useless, meaningless horror movie tropes, right? We have the mm-hmm. shadowy thing that walks in front of the camera suddenly. And it's so mm-hmm. clearly just Dave walking by in his trench coat or whatever. <laughs> Also, just want to point this out. Her half wipe is not at all sanitary. Right? Like, I, I get why they didn't have this girl thoroughly wipe. But if you're going to show us someone peeing, maybe don't have them like wave a piece of toilet paper at their genitals and then immediately stand up. Yeah, that'll get you an infection way worse than a demon. That's all I'm saying. That's probably yeah. where the demon Front got in. Front to back. Front to back. All right. So. Yeah, but so she like she leaves the bathroom and then she has to go to back and turn the light out and then she leaves and the light comes back on and there's a a demon shadow or something or like a silhouetted in there or or whatever. Oh, if she had turned the corner when the light turned back on and Ghost Mom was in there taking a shit, I would have bought every <laughs> copy of this movie and exist just like, ah, oh, come on, I gotta stop making casseroles so late at night. Oh God! <laughs> but of course. Our hero doesn't notice any of this shit, which started making me think that like Ghost Mom is like desperately trying to get seen and she's just always like, oh, no, don't look, don't turn around. I just made a fucking noise. <laughs> yeah, she's just desperate for a scare. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Mom. I walked Pop right in front corner. of the camera. <laughs> yeah. I, I was promised I was the ghost in this movie. I feel like I'm being, I feel like I'm being edged out. <laughs> And then and, and then we get the shaky bed scene, right? It's like yeah. she goes back to bed and the bed shakes. It's like, yeah, that's that's demon possession there, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right. So now it, we're going to ramp up the pedophile shit here because yeah. the next morning we cut to Pastor Boy Band taking like su- he's got this super zoom on his lens taking super close up pictures of Ashley as she rides her bike to the candy store. And it will I mean, never, ever come back. They will never right? explain we, why he'd be doing this other than he's right? a pedophile. Exactly. Also, what goddamn decade is this filmmaker from 
where they have the kids showing up at the candy store with its kindly old candy proprietor. What the fuck is this shit? Well, and again, because it's set in modernity, like when you actually get inside the candy shop, it's the saddest half set you've ever seen. They've just got like three mixing bowls with loose fruities in them. And he's like, who can make the sun shine? <laughs> Oh my god. It's the worst Willy Wonka of all time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's nowhere near as scary, nowhere near as many pop scares. Nope. So, yeah, so Al Ashley's there to browse the candy. She doesn't buy anything, right? She's just there to browse, I guess, see if the lemon heads are in season. And then the pastor comes in <laughs> to stalk and flirt with her. Yep. I mean, it's so uncomfortable. And again, that will never pay off. They are not a love interest. Nothing like that ever happens. It is just a moment where it's like, huh? They all want to fuck this pastor. I guess. Yeah, I have <laughs> no idea what they were even going for in this scene. You know, he's like, hey, you know, your aunt told me all about you. You're even hotter than she described. Uh, anyway, you would come to church. Come to church. I have a youth group. <laughs> youth group. They let me around the youth group. They haven't seen my photography yet, I guess. And again, the the movie wants us to be like, man, Ashley's being weird. He followed a child into a candy store. And in the age of cell phones, he with a giant camera. Yeah. That's <laughs> 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 well, oh, and, and speaking of shit that never matters, the, the camera becomes the conversation piece, right? Because uh, apparently Ashley's really into photography and she knows that camera. It's a good camera, but he needs this such and such lens. And he's like, Oh, well, you should take pictures of uh, church events with me. And she's like, oh, OK. And, he, and then he's like, will this conversation ever have anything to do with anything else in the plot? And she's like, nope. Bye. No. <laughs> Jesus. Then fucking Hannah comes in and Pastor John flirts with her, too. Yep, he just flirts with everybody. I reckon he got fired from his CW show. <laughs> 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 Which is a shame because he was the baddest ass vampire of all of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shirtless priest, vampire hunter. It was only two episodes, but it was really good. <laughs> it was all going to come together in season four, goddammit. <laughs> so, all right. So then, uh, okay, now Ashley and Hannah have to have that awkward cover. You know how, like, you go to a party with somebody and you get shit faced and. Yeah, do some shit that you kind of would rather nobody knew about, but you have to talk to the people the next day. They have that conversation, except about her weird demon moment the night before. <laughs> hey, look, nobody cares that you shit your pants and saw your dead mom. <laughs> That's not. We all still really like you. Um, we're not doing those parties anymore, though, so don't like come by or anything. Yeah, you kind of ruined the night for Bryce. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then, by the way, the fucking love interest drives up, reminds us that he's a shitty person, and then drives away. I mean, reminds us that he is a proud boy. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yes. Like, this is like the most racist truck with the most yes. racist-looking people in it. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just missing a, a fucking gun rack and a Confederate flag, exactly. and it would have fit right in in my neighborhood. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, yeah. he's going to jump the General Lee over the girls and invite <laughs> him to the skip and dance. Exactly. <laughs> well, she'll sure be dressed for that later. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, Nazis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, and they, they so they drive up, they neg these two girls and drive away, and then Shane or Sean or whatever his name is sends a text to Ashley saying, hey, you're my preordained love interest. See you soon. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to skip a pop scare scene. Yep. We are, yeah. We're not going to see her seeing a demon in school. We're going to hear about her here seeing a demon in school. Yeah, right. This is the old adage, the old writer's adage, don't tell me or show me <laughs> <laughs> what yeah so we immediately cut we cut from that to very quickly aunt tanya getting a call at her you know whatever refrigerator art shop right and then <laughs> we cut to hannah going like has anyone seen ashley something very interesting happened to her off camera today <laughs> let me tell you do you see your dead mom again she's like yeah but the SFX budget guys told me to fuck myself. So I'm just gonna... <laughs> Turns out that mask looks really bad when you're not in the woods at night. 
it's even worse. So. <laughs> And I love fucking Shane. Shane is still trying to get laid, right? Hannah comes in yeah. and she's like, hey, Ashley, you know, you freaked out there. Are you having some kind of mental break or something? Or is, is there something wrong? Is there something I can help you with? And Shane's like, I'll give you a ride home. Yeah. <laughs> I love silent torture chicks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so she's going to ride home. She, Shane's going to give him a ride home. But Hannah says, hey, look, I'll come by later. I know a demonic haunting when I see one, damn it. We established earlier that I'm into Mormonism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I'm the brunette. I know these things. <laughs> yeah, right, right, of course. So she catches her ride home with uh, Shane, and she's like, we have... This movie is so fucking stupid. We have this long bit about how she's not taking Aunt Tanya's calls. We watch Aunt Tanya t- try to call her several times, but the very next scene is her calling Aunt Tanya to tell her everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're back at the house. It's time for Ashley to wander around trying to find the source of that creepy noise again, I guess. Hello? Yep. Hello? Just wandering around her house yelling hello. Like you do hello? when you hear noises in the middle of your <laughs> horror movie. Damn it, I said hello! <laughs> what I love is that once isn't enough for her, right? She's got to say that like five different times. She's like, I guess, uh, Ali, Ali oxen free. Fuck. Um, <laughs> yeah, but then so she's wandering around looking for creepy shit. We're getting one horror movie trope after the other behind her. And then Hannah shows up and scares her and goes, boo. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? I just thought I'd show up at your house. <laughs> yeah, I break in and then walk upstairs and yeah, into the dark room that you're looking through. Why doesn't she turn on lights when she comes into the room? I don't understand. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. And then Hannah goes, hey, wait a minute. Is that a Bible right there? We're going to need this or it won't count for God awful movies. We'd have to be on a different... <laughs> Yeah, and how did this get made or something? And this is where we get the thing that makes this movie amazing. The my body type devil heavy breathing in the corner. It's the silliest possible image. Like a yeah. foot and a half from these girls. Yeah, dad bod devil. <laughs> yeah, you got to wonder what that decision was like in hell. And so I said, torture your own people. Good for you. Good for you. Right? Right. But then he's like, why does it matter? Oh, what a jerk. Minions. Minions come to me. Yes, Lord Satan. Witness the new form I will use to take another soul. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> y- yes. None... None shall stand against... Sorry, yes? I don't, I don't know. It's just... I, I, how do I say this? It's kind of... Dad bod. A dad bod, yes, exactly. In in like a scary way, you think? Eh. I mean, it's kind of scary. I mean, well, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm worried you need to be on Lipitor scary. Yeah. Yeah, like life-threatening. It'll... It'll be fine, though, right? Oh, yeah, sure. totally. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah right, absolutely. I'm sure. Who? Okay, that makes sense. No, yeah, no, you gotta... Yeah. And also, as they're leaving the room, so what they're going for is the devil's in this room and you can smell the brimstone. But instead, Brunette just turns to Blonde Girl and goes, what's that smell? And I wanted Blonde Girl to be like, oh, I farted out of fear when you said my name. It was a whole... <laughs> Like, I don't think I shit myself, but I'm going to go into the bathroom and wipe when we're done. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could be that, too. I don't really wipe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't spend more than a quarter of a second. So. <laughs> All right. So now, now Hannah and Ashley are going to do some spirit bullshit. <laughs> they're going to reach out to the spirit world to talk to her mom. And I love, okay, they're they're like doing away with all the accoutrements and, and, and nonsense. They're like, no, 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 you literally, you just light a couple candles and talk into a mirror. Trust me. <laughs> That's all it takes. This is a horror movie. In the real world, yeah, you'd have to light some, you'd have to do an incant. They don't, don't fucking worry about it. We're just going to talk into the mirror. Mirrors are basically demon caller ID. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, demon FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> and then, 
So she's like, what's your mom's name? And she says, Sarah. And it's like, oh, yeah, we'll just ask for Sarah in the afterlife. I'm sure she's the only one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> With a new name like that. The only dead Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So I, but I also love how formally Hannah is requesting this parlay. She's like, excuse me, I'd like to schedule an appointment for a demon conversation between <laughs> Sarah and her daughter. Any chance of... Uh, Hey, well, you just you call me back and let me know what time works for you then. Um, and of course, while we're while she's doing all this, we're hearing and seeing like creepy horror movie tropes that have nothing to do with the fucking movie. It's cold. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah, because the devil's here. That's yeah. it always gets so cold. You know, and I associate with the devil cold coldness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, no, because that was a trope they used in Sixth Sense, so we have to use that here. God damn it. Uh, yep. Ah, uh, and then okay, and then we get that moment where the devil's behind him in the mirror. Yep. And and there's this moment of like, was that is that your mom? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. You didn't mention your mom's um giant devil cloven hooves. <laughs> <laughs> And hey, credit to Hannah here. She avoids the horror movie trope. The moment she sees the devil, she's like, cool, gotta go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out she of is here. fucking yes. out. <laughs> okay, you make a lot more sense now. Yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> and again, Ashley acts like she's upset because she like party fouled in front of the popular girl. Like I wanted to see her crying to Aunt Tanya. I summoned the devil in front of the coolest <laughs> girl in school. <laughs> Uh, if I had a nickel. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So then uh, so Aunt Tanya comes home just as Hannah's leaving. And Aunt Tanya's like, wow, she left like you guys had been summoning the devil in here right before I <laughs> showed up. And OK, so there's this great moment where the two of them are arguing. Right. Because like Ashley had this moment in school and then didn't take Aunt Tanya's calls for a while or whatever. And Ashley is way too early on all of her lines in this dialogue. She's like, you know, trying to cut tanya off but she's like six words too early for it to make sense every time and tanya's not a good en uh, enough actor to roll with it so she just no. keeps going with her line after ashley's <laughs> interrupted like this tanya's acting would distract you from a porn right yes <laughs> well and this is a porn so well, yep, it's, an, it's a near yeah. porn <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah but ultimately this ends with aunt tanya and ashley deciding that they're gonna have a movie night Yay. <laughs> and again, like, this is just like no one who had anything to do with this movie has ever watched a movie. Apparently, she's got a disposable popcorn <laughs> bucket that's got like three kernels of popcorn in it. Oh, my God. Why couldn't they just get her all the popcorn? That was so <laughs> fucking weird to me. Like, I, I'm like, there's no way you guys didn't have the budget for popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't want to watch women eat. <laughs> oh, right, right. No, they're women, so they'd only eat nine <laughs> kernels exactly. apiece, I guess. Right. Yeah. She brings a cardboard box marked popcorn. She just ran over to the concession stand in her kitchen. She comes back and the I, I, I was sure this thing was empty for the longest. And then they pass it in front of a light and you can see that there's this tiny, thin little layer of popcorn in the bottom of it. It's like that's worse than there not being anything in it, guys. Yeah, this is the classic example of the ninth tank and props won't refill the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's all drive to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the devil comes dancing through doing that. That would have been the best. <laughs> and again, be because they realize that, like, oh, when people watch movies, they are silent and watch a movie. Aunt Tanya immediately turns to her in the scene and is like, oh, your mother and I love to talk while we watched a movie. We didn't really watch movies. We put a movie on and talked. I guess we just like talking and eating popcorn, if I think about it. Yeah. This movie's stupid. Yeah. I just like, I like talking while other people are trying to talk. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I should get into podcasting. All right. So yeah. uh, <laughs> the Skype delay gives you a great excuse. All right. So yeah, and they, they start to have this conversation about what was it like to have movie nights with my mom, but the writers realize about three lines in that they do not have the skill for this conversation. Yeah. So it just abruptly ends and we cut to, like, Tanya's nightmare of Father Michael just standing there on fire. 
<laughs> yeah, the old reverend guy from earlier. She's seeing him in her living room in a lake of fire. I think it's just his kink. Okay. <laughs> finding that out. I got, I got it. I get it. And then she flashes back to her sister, Ashley's mom, telling her that she's both pregnant and possessed by demons. <laughs> Boy, I'm having a hell of a week. I'm going to hit you with a twofer. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. And I've got a demon inside me. <laughs> I want it so badly to like cut over to the devil with morning sickness, just being like, oh, this is the fucking worst. <laughs> My feet hurt so much. <laughs> and of course, because this is a fucking exorcism movie, Tanya says, Sarah, you just need psychiatric help and is wrong. Yep. Stop telling me your feelings. <laughs> Go get help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so instead of getting her psychiatric help, they pray together. <sighs> and then flies start gathering around as she says demon stuff. Like, I don't know if she's summoning them or if they're just into this track. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like fucking fly Woodstock in the car all of a sudden. Yeah. And then Tanya wakes up on the couch because that was all a dream or a memory. Now, for those of you listening, you may be confused. And yeah, yes. <laughs> Us too. Us too. <laughs> we are doing our fucking jobs. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So then that night. Ashley wakes up for yet another walking slowly through the house to demon noises scene. <laughs> this is one where she sees all the flies around the vent. Yep. And then we got to see where the fucking CGI budget went. <laughs> it is. <laughs> this the was the silliest possible looking oh demo. My God. <laughs> Yeah, I really appreciate that, Rebecca. You have him always as Devil Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like okay, you know that Donnie Darko shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he sort of had a Donnie Darko yeah. thing. Have you seen that video where everybody's like, "Is that a bird or a rabbit?" He kind of had that going on. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Except, and I liked this choice because not enough devils go with this in in horror movies. His nose. Uh, you remember Ziggy, the cartoon Ziggy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The devil went. They went with a Ziggy nose on the. I, what the <laughs> fuck was that? <laughs> Nothing more terrifying. Someone in the design department, yeah, than a blobfish nose on a demon. <laughs> 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 Fucking what? And then the so demon, weird. I guess, mounts Ashley and spits in her mouth. Spits <laughs> in her mouth. Yes. <laughs> Yes, like the evil big brother trick. Yes. Yeah. All of our notes are just yuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. That's where the movie's budget went, and I'm delighted. So I want to pause on a high note. This movie will never make me happier than it just made me. So uh, we're going to take a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will we ever acknowledge that a priest taking photos of a teenage girl is creepy as hell? Can the devil lose up to 15 pounds in just six weeks? Why confuse us with the older sister character if she's never going to factor into the fucking movie? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the inconclusive conclusion of Along Came the Devil. Boo! <laughs> Fine. At last. <laughs> Lulu, doing teenage girl stuff. Teenage girl stuff is my favorite stuff. Just gonna go in my room and check on my. Oh no, it's. I'm. I'm sorry. Are you, are you okay? Yep. To totally good. Sorry. It's just there were a lot of stairs on the way up. Yeah, old house. Yeah. Just give me one second. I brought a Gatorade. I don't think you're supposed to drink that super fast. It's fine. It's electrolytes. A lot of sugar in there. It's fine. Oh, it's not fine. Oh, it is not fine. Can I use your bathroom? Second door on the left. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to steal your soul. Got it. Is this the, is it? No, no, the, the next one. Right. Sorry, second. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last left off, Ashley was watching 
hefty devil drool fuck her unconscious body <laughs> and we're going to rejoin the action with her scarfing down some breakfast like Tanya's timing her, right? Like Kobayashi <laughs> or something, yeah. And she's supposed to be dressed all sinful here? Oh. And I, I okay. Yeah. I'm being haunted by the devil, so who cares? <laughs> Dress how I want. It's, it's yeah. so... It's so a Christian idea of like, yeah. this is how bad girls yep. dress. Yes, Look yes, at those totally. shorts. They're totally. above the knee. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't dye her hair brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and look, I mean, like, it, it's just, you know, it's just a girl dressed to, to be outdoors all fucking day. But the super porny shot of her yeah. ass on the way out. Like they they were like, uh, you think it's sexy enough? He's like, oh, wait until I get done with my masturbation cam on it. Yeah, no, yeah. we'll get there. Yeah, like seventies Dukes of Hazard level porn. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so weird. Ah, uh, yeah, and again, right? Like it, this is that Christian moment of like, no, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a religious movie, but the devil's in her, so we get to dress her all up sexy. Yeah, yeah. it's just bad. Yeah, yeah. The reason I want to fuck her is because she's. The devil, and she's <laughs> making me want that. Yeah, right, right, yeah. exactly. Oh, it's her Ray fault. Comfort would love you. Okay, so so she gets out, like, like I guess Shane, the love interest guy, is going to give her a ride to school, but she gets to his truck, and she's like, hey, you want to not go to school and go off and fuck or something? And he's like, yep, <laughs> yes, sure do. I do. I am a teenage boy, so yes. So they head out on a boat, because they have a boat, I guess, or they stole a boat. Yeah. <laughs> That's what? the best. That is the best possible, right? Because she's like, why don't we get out of here and do something wild? Flash cut to them having a lovely afternoon on the lake. Yes, <laughs> right. And and playing slaps. <laughs> They're playing fucking hand slaps. How romantic. <laughs> okay. He. I want to talk about this slaps game. She hits him so hard on this yes. third round of slaps. Yeah. This actor calls cut and starts weeping yeah. and they kept it all in the movie. <laughs> God, you were supposed to be acting. You were supposed to be acting. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's like, wow, you're way better than at slaps that I am. We shouldn't do that anymore. And she's like, you want to fuck? And he's like, after that slap, probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Again, this movie has demons in it, and the least realistic thing in it is that this teenage boy is discouraged from sex stuff with this girl. <laughs> yeah. I I never thought about fucking a lady before. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just, aren't we going a bit yeah. too fast, young yeah. lady? Yeah. Must be the devil. <laughs> also, okay, so they start kissing, and then he runs, he pulls back, and he's like, you bit my tongue. And then he spits out, like, a fist-sized glob <laughs> of blood, right? He starts again, just basically orally menstruating here. <laughs> and again, I was a teenage boy. There are no teenage boys who would let a little tip of my tongue got bit off stop them from trying to get it over the hand. <laughs> hand no. no, it's fine. It's fine. You know what? I'll just I'll just chew on these box of tissues <laughs> and you just whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my my dick's all there still. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> right. Let's not do oral, but I'm still down for sex. Yeah. <laughs> Slapping was hard, bit off my tongue. I'm going to go with foot job, I feel like, is what I have left. All right, and then, so we cut away from that moment. We will never see Shane again. We will never, never find out how, what happens here. I mean, it's wild. All of, So many useless scenes oh. in this movie, like where characters completely disappear. It's wild. Yeah. Well, and then we cut to Tanya, right? She's at work at the refrigerator front art store, and she gets a call from the school that Ashley never showed up. And, and fucking Tanya's dumbass is like, wait a minute. I could have sworn she was going to school with that boy dressed like a Dixie-themed stripper. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, again, more non-reaction from that Tanya. Yeah, right. <laughs> Beverly, I'm going to need you to watch the Feather Lamp Picture Frame store. I need to go yell at my niece. <laughs> Yeah, and Hannah can't find her either. So, okay, so Tanya comes home. Now, we can tell that that hello shit is genetic here, right? Because Tanya <laughs> walks in and she starts going, Ashley? Ashley? Like, good. Like, come on. After two, you don't need to keep doing it anymore. <laughs> oh, I love this too. Okay, so 
Tanya walks in, Aunt Tanya walks into Ashley's bedroom to see if she's in there, and she catches the smell of death that he, everybody keeps complaining about. Yeah, her dirty vagina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, her unwiped uh, uh, asshole and everything. But, but what, <laughs> what I love so much about this, though, is that over and over again in this movie, people walk into that room, they catch the smell, they go, oh, my God, and then they just leave the room. They don't go get the Febreze or anything. They don't check the vent. They're just it's, like, yeah, I guess it stinks in here now. <laughs> it's your house. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Well, now we know that about that room, and we'll stay that way. <laughs> All right. So, meanwhile, Hannah couldn't find Ashley either, so she's checking out Tobin's spirit guide or something, trying to figure <laughs> out what's going on. Getting your friend possessed by a demon for dummies. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, but eventually Ashley does come home late that night, and her face is all bloody from a bloody nose, so... Aunt Tanya takes her to the hospital? <laughs> Did you eat a guy? You ate a guy. Okay, let's get the shovels. No, it's okay, honey. We've all bitten off a dude's tongue. <laughs> it's part, part of, of growing, growing up, up as a strong young man. <laughs> all right, so now we, okay, we head to church where we cut in on the, the priest looking over his perv pics just in case you'd forgotten that this character takes long distance close up shots of teenage girls on their bikes. <laughs> we remind you of that. Again, this will never re relate to the movie at all. No, it literally is just his hobby. That's yep. it. <laughs> We're just learning about him and it has nothing to do with the plot at all. He's just a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, to these writers, the priest is a pedophile is the same as, and he's into jazz. He's into exactly. he likes jazz. Exactly. <laughs> So he's looking over his perv pics and, and suddenly he notices that old reverend is in the church with him getting absolutely shit faced on scotch. <laughs> yeah, totally. And they start talking about doubt. Now, this is such a weird way to enter this conversation, right? Because the old reverend says to the young priest, he's like, you ever you ever doubt? And what he's really trying to get to is. I have a basement full of demon possessed people in this very church. And sometimes yeah. I doubt if that's a good idea, but he frames it around. Do you ever doubt God, which is a weird thing to do if you've got a fucking exorcism dungeon. Yeah. Again, to give away the twist of this film, what this yeah. priest is talking about is I've literally never succeeded at an exorcism. And as a result, have a medieval style prison full of demon possessed humans. And yes. he's like, yeah, man, I don't know. Surprise! <laughs> Thomas Aquinas, and he's like, yeah, that's... Br Which makes this scene insane, because he's like, I don't know, sometimes it's darkest before the dawn, and he's like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah, right! Right! Yeah, and in the movie, the line, there's a line where he says, spare me the seminary bullshit. I'm like, that's what I thought when I pressed play on the movie. Yeah, so right! Here, here it is. <laughs> I think that could be the tagline. <laughs> And then again, apropos of nothing, the young priest, literally apropos of nothing, the young priest goes, okay, I'm in. Yeah. And the, the older priest is like, didn't, didn't really invite you to anything. I was just talking. <laughs> no, no, no. You had me at prison. Yeah, right. <laughs> of little girls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So now we cut to the hospital. We're at the hospital over the nosebleed and we have this great moment where the doctor comes in and has to tell aunt tanya like no it's it's fucking nose you you tilt back your head yeah is is what you don't take you don't go to the fucking yeah. hospital yeah. ma'am you're taking up other people's space <laughs> so if you could just leave <laughs> <laughs> oh but they do want her to see a shrink the shrink and i love it too she's like i'm a therapist here are drugs <laughs> because because like Christian movies spend more time demonizing psychiatric medicine than actual demons. She, yes. she got a nosebleed and she was prescribed an antidepressant and a sedative. I wrote in my notes here, excuse me, I have to pause the movie to punch myself in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> also, here's a bottle of Vicodin and some fentanyl patches. I don't know why. Just here you go. Yeah. A lottery ticket. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the doctor is a black woman, mm -hmm. which very progressive. You're right. But they do not show her. 
they it's she's like if she was being like interviewed and wanted to keep herself anonymous right like she's in witness she's, protection or something. yeah she is blurred out which considering which, this movie like i get it if that was a demand in her contract <laughs> She saw the dailies. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, no, no. no. You can't use you're my face, to, though. You yeah, can, you're, yeah. My voice this is pretty is nondescript. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Eli, where I thought you were going with uh, was, uh, given what we know of this director so far, I can imagine if he said, okay, but 50% of the black people have to be blurred out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I love, too, how little they understand about anything in the universe, right? Because uh, the, the shrink says to Ashley as they're leaving, she's like, you're okay, kid, but if you ever need anyone to talk to, call me anytime. But, you know, bring money because my rates put sex <laughs> lives to shame. I mean, no, that's not how it works at all. Yeah, no, not at all. If you need a friend, I'm a medical professional. <laughs> yeah. So please don't use yeah, me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I would be a bad choice. <laughs> all right. So now let's do a time lapse of this girl on a bed for eight hours. This is amazing because here's what happened. The people who made this movie saw paranormal activity and yeah. they were like, fast motion sleeping is scary. Put it in the movie. <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. didn't realize that the part about paranormal activity that's scary is like the ghost blanket, not just like sleeping real fast. <laughs> <laughs> also, they made this poor girl lie there and pretend to sleep for, I'm guessing, 30 or 40 minutes. So this actress is moving like a nightmare. She's just like she's doing cartwheels and calluses. <laughs> well, yeah. she, looks, she so runs out of different sleep poses before they're done filming, right? At one point, she's doing symmetrical poses left and then right. It's yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah, it should have had like the Benny Hill song. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> making making a snow angel in bed <laughs> yeah right exactly all right but yeah they, that eventually ends and now hannah shows up to do battle with that demon once and for all so she tosses a few rocks at the window <laughs> uh hannah that girl is on a sedative you could throw the window at her face she's not waking up <laughs> She had a nosebleed. <laughs> Come on. But she does manage to wake up the devil. So the devil shows up in the window. And God once again, <laughs> Hannah runs the fuck away. I love Hannah so much. Bye. <laughs> She's like, oh, there's demons at this exorcism. <laughs> fuck off. Oh, I didn't realize. that. Oh, it looks like you're busy. I'm going to come back later. <laughs> <laughs> but. As she's biking away, she stops uh -oh. in the middle of the road to check her texts and gets killed by a truck. Okay. <laughs> this shot is so sloppy because it literally goes devil flash to her getting hit by a car devil again for no reason. Right. It's just yep. the devil being like, you want some pancakes, Ashley? I was thinking of making pancakes. <laughs> and then it goes back to the car crash to show us that Ashley in fact, was hit by said car. Yeah. Can we talk about physics, too? Yeah. The shot we see, there's no way she, that car would have been turned that way. No. There's no, they just put a car and her on the ground. I, like, <laughs> right. Like, we have to, to recreate this accident in your mind. The car had to be moving sideways at the time that it hit her, right? Exactly. Like, they had yeah. to be trying to smack her with the tail end as they did a fish around her. I, yeah. It was. <laughs> Look, there's a car. We can't afford to wreck one, so we're just going right. to pull it real close to this telephone pole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then just get on the ground anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. 11 and a half feet from your bike, please. We want everybody yeah. to get the impression that you flew like goddamn Charlie Brown missing the football. Why don't we put a sock up in the air here? <laughs> Jesus. And then, okay, so we have the moment where, like, Tanya comes in to, like, I don't know, crack a window in Ashley's room to let the smell out, I guess. But Ashley has left her EVP app uh, turned on on her phone. Yep. And now it's calling Tanya's name. So Tanya just turns it the fuck off. And leaves. Good for Tanya, man. <laughs> there's there's a switch in it. <laughs> yeah. Tanya. Ta oh, all right. Wow. <laughs> fucking hang. I wanted her to get a text from the devil that's just like, did you just fucking hang up on me? <laughs> I thought that's 
how you guys greet each other. Is you say your name over and over and over again. Yeah, right? Yeah, isn't that the house rule here? <laughs> yeah. Tanya? <laughs> All right, so now fucking Aunt Tanya goes to Google. I shit you not. This is the first fucking thing that shows up on her uh, Google page. Depression or demonic possession? <laughs> if it's not one, it's the other. <laughs> yeah, remember, Christian viewers, it's not enough to go see a medical professional. You should Google it, too, and to get both sides. God damn it. Yeah, fun fact, uh, it's actually a great quiz, because if anyone ever says it's anything other than depression, they are at best mentally ill. <laughs> yeah. By the way, cannot recommend Googling this enough. You get a like weird side episode of Christian Bill Nye, the science guy, talking about how mental illness isn't real and that everything is devil. <gasps> it's pretty great. Yeah, I went down a Google rabbit hole oh here. Oh, my God. It was All right. God awful mini in the can. There. <laughs> awesome. All right. So now we cut to a church service. We're listening to bad Christian pop. I mean, Christian pop. I mean, pop. I don't want to be redundant. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, when I it, kill me like yeah. worst music ever. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! Yeah, can yeah. you imagine su doing that on a Sunday morning, <laughs> listening to that like first thing when you're still kind of sick from Saturday night stuff? And also, the people in the movie seem to agree because <laughs> yes. they are not moving, and they 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 are not they don't look like they're listening to anything, <laughs> which on a movie set. You're probably not. Right. Right. Yeah. But these are the worst extras in history. <laughs> so they just got them waiting for the next take. That's yeah. what it looks like. <laughs> They're frozen like it's the yeah. second band. Like we've all been to that concert where you've got a good opener and then just an in someone's girlfriend's mom started a band that's all tambourines. And then there's the band everyone came to see. That's how they look. They look like they're on tambourine band. Which, to to be fair, they're right. It's that. Yeah, <laughs> no, it is. It yeah. is tambourine band. Ex with the exception, though, of Ashley, who is rocking back and forth <laughs> like she's masturbating, right? <laughs> oh, okay. You can tell that these movie makers have never been to church because this girl's behavior is the least disruptive thing going on at any given church service on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they start doing the prayer, but the devil that's inside her can't handle all this praying. So she ogre noises her way up to the front, bleeds out of the eyes and yells devil words, and then passes out. Uh, seen it. <laughs> <laughs> what wanted the aunt to come over? Ashley, you're embarrassing me. You are embarrassing me. <laughs> All right. So now Tanya's like, I've got to take her to the hospital. And the priests are going like, no, no, only God can help her. Leave her with us. Leave your teenage daughter with this guy who's been taking pictures of her. Yes. Nope. Uh, Unbelievable. I, I need you to trust me and and leave your very obviously ill niece alone with us. <laughs> yep. Here. Two men in all black suits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that are technically celibate and think <laughs> that we're angels. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. And so so Tanya drives off with Ashley and the young priest turns to the old reverend and he's like, all right, God damn it. We're well into the third act. What the fuck is this movie about? <laughs> <laughs> and he is it me or does Father Michael do the like, I gave up that life and yes! me back <laughs> all right. I'll never ride a horse again, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, but, but this conversation is that they have to get the demon's name. Right. Right. And this is going to be tricky because this time the demon was invited in. Right. So now you got to do that whole awkward bit where you just sort of naturally thought they were going to leave once the movie was over and you don't <laughs> want them in there anymore. And you can't just say, hey, why don't you guys leave? And it becomes a whole thing. It's really awkward. So I get it. I got it. I wanted the young priest to be like, OK, we got to get his name. Can we sign him up for the face app? There's a lot of. <laughs> <let's> just... <laughs> Ooh, I do want to know what I would look like if I was old. Oh, look at me. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so they're after the demon's metadata, I guess. And in order to get that, they're going to have to read the forbidden books quick. <laughs> quick, read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quick, read several 400-page books. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so weird. And now, okay, so old reverend guy goes, 
uh, we're getting this voiceover, right? Where he's going, like we're seeing Antonia try to take care of Ashley. And the priest voiceover is explaining the three phases of demonic possession. Yes. Now, the first stage is just existing in space time. Right. <laughs> he's like, he's like, first, the demon will be in a place or, or a smell, maybe. What? <laughs> Guys, my house has like 45 demons. I think I need to talk to my real uh, The demon loves the trash can. <laughs> yeah, right, right. In the kitty litter box. Oh. The kitty litter box is loaded with demons. You go out, you go out on trash night and there's a demon like perched on your trash can. Come on, you're smashing trash cans to <laughs> lids together. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, now that's the first stage. The second stage is oppression. This is where the demon chooses a target. And then the third stage of possession is possession. Possession. <laughs> that's where he goes. I'm like, then those aren't the three stages. That's two words and then all the stages of possession then, you asshole. <laughs> and again, given what the twist of this movie will be, what the fuck do you know, dude? Why are you right. talking? <laughs> we will learn at the yeah. end of this movie he has never succeeded. Uh, yeah, because his list is terrible. Yeah, right. <laughs> the stages are terrible stages. <laughs> I mean, he makes everybody else read the book. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, why do I have to read your forbidden books? Haven't you read the motherfuckers? <laughs> Obviously not. I feel like with that dungeon full of possessed people, it's really incumbent upon you to read these motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, it's like required, dude. <laughs> oh, and then, of course, while he's saying all that, we're watching Aunt Tanya and Ashley, and, and Aunt Tanya's nose starts bleeding. No reason, just because that's a horror movie trope, right? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So we learned that the only way to beat the demon is to unlock the secret of his name. And now the second most unrealistic part of this movie after the teenage boy saying, hey, shouldn't we slow down with all this sex stuff? <laughs> the doctor from before that treated her at the hospital for the nosebleed makes a house call. Is there for a <laughs> Hello, I just got out of my 14th century time machine. I think she might have the rickets. <laughs> I'll go be alone with a demon now. Well, first, oh let God. me explain to you that Hannah is dead. I am a doctor <laughs> that you met once that has no reason to think that you have any connection to this young girl that got hit by a car in any way. But just in case, I'm going to open with that. <laughs> I'm just telling all my patients today, Hannah is dead. Uh, you didn't know her either? Okay, cool. I was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I feel like they cut a whole plot line where... Aunt Tanya and this doctor fell in love because it makes so much so little fucking sense any other way, right? She hugs him when she finds out that Hannah's dead, and then he's like, I'm gonna go check on Ashley, and then he just walks upstairs knowing where her bedroom is. Yep. Right. Unless this is just like a town of pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, I, guess. I know where all the teenage girls' bedrooms are exactly. actually in this like, town. <laughs> and everybody's cool with it, you know? There's a candy shop. Like, yeah, right, everybody's right. Cool. You're writing a much scarier movie than this movie. Yeah, too, no yeah. shit. Yeah. All right. And OK, so now th the priests show up at Tanya's house to help. They're like, hey, you know, uh, you can't handle this demonic possession thing on your own. Uh, so we're here. And then we get the most comical goddamn demon noises from upstairs. <laughs> right. It's like I expect them to walk in. The devil's blowing his nose or something. Going, oh, sorry, guys. I'm just I'm a little it's allergies, though. So it's not contagious. <laughs> Um. <laughs> <laughs> and so they walk in to the room and I know they weren't going for humor here but the doctor tied up with all the syringes sticking out of him was so fucking it looked like she was playing pin the tail on the donkey with him or something which apparently she did by just freeing one of her arms right because yeah. she's still <laughs> otherwise tied down to the bed yeah right so with one arm untied she managed to tie him to the foot of the bed and stick like why did he even bring 37 syringes with him? <laughs> what the fuck did he think was wrong with this girl? Right. She's just going to need a little morphine, I guess. Yeah, and, I guess. Uh, one for good measure. And... <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't know what I was going to like I, on the way here. I might come across a World War One battle or something. I just want to be prepared. <laughs> 
All right, so now the old uh, reverend is going to do the exorcism thing. This is where we're going to directly lift from the exorcist, right? This entire scene. Yep. And again, it's so weird because they mentioned the exorcist. <laughs> and none of these characters are like, wow, this is just like word for word straight out of the exorcist. <laughs> like, I wanted at least the demon to acknowledge it and be like, you get it? Like the exorcist. <laughs> it's I'm just, my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I'm having some fun. <laughs> And then, like, Tanya comes in and she screams and then they immediately usher her out. So there was no reason for there to be for her to be there, except that, like, I guess scared is the one emotion she can do. <laughs> right. They're like, she's like, no, I'll be damned if I'm going to get through a whole horror movie without you guys hearing my scream. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's no reaction, the whole movie and then overreaction. <laughs> and then yeah. the priest, who, again, I cannot emphasize strongly enough, is not a doctor, just injects her with a sedative. Yeah, yep. in the neck. <laughs> yep. It, so either either there was 38 syringes in the doctor's bag or that priest just carries around child sedative <laughs> with him. Like, yeah. either way, this is creepy. <laughs> yeah, is that like a missing stage of possession? <laughs> <laughs> Sedation. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then here's the dumb fight. Like, this really shows you how stupid these fucking writers are. Okay, so they sedate her and take her back to the church. Which means that they could, this scene could have come immediately after her bleeding from the eyes, right? There was no reason, nothing, no purpose was served by having her go home and then come back to the fucking <laughs> church. <laughs> they had to get the shot on of her in a bed, like, from The Exorcist. Exactly. Like, that's what I mean by ham-fisting all of these things. Yep. They really just, like, in order to do the trope, they don't care. Oh, so my God. You're right, sense. though. That's exactly why that scene is yeah. there. They were just like, yeah. originally they had the script as then they put, uh, do the fucking thing in the church. And then they're like, no, 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 no. We got it. She got to be in a bed when they start. Yeah. So now we're <laughs> at a church. We're doing the same scene, but harder. And they're so bad at like anti demon words, right? He's like, hey, demon, get on out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> that is the word. You get. You skip. <laughs> <laughs> also, he tells the story of Jesus wrong in a way that's pretty important. He's like, in the name of Lord Jesus, who died and descended to hell and then went to heaven. <laughs> Jesus did not make a pit stop in hell. That's not part of canon. Yeah, no, Jesus made a pit stop in hell. He, that's where he, he was did? for those three days. Yeah, that's where he was for the three days he was yeah. dead. He went down to hell and uh, uh, preached to all of the people who hadn't been there to hear all the good Jesus stuff so that they could go to heaven, too. That's incredible and i'm so glad that we're going to eventually get to that <laughs> i don't know at the rate we're going no we're not <laughs> no. No. but yeah okay so there the demon is saying swear words tanya screams every time the scene slows down a little too much i guess <laughs> and then okay this is amazing at one point you guys correct me if i'm wrong on the order of operations here ashley rips through her bonds that they've got her tied to the chair with. <laughs> she steps forward. The old reverend does a force push. Yes, he does. He karate uh -huh. kicks her into the corner with holy water. <laughs> and then yeah. we get this wildly uncomfortable upskirt on the throw. Yep. <laughs> when she goes against the wall. It's so inappropriate. <laughs> I just wrote, I am sorry, Rebecca. I had not <laughs> seen this movie before I invited you to do this episode. <laughs> And then in my notes, I wrote, Eli is a perv. Yeah, <laughs> right. Fair. All right. So then she, she wakes up, like, I guess sometime later from the force throw, and she climbs up the wall like Batman and Batman versus Superman. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking silly. So they start, like, you know, demanding her demon name or whatever. So she breaks the priest's arm. Well, first she breaks her own arm. Yep. yep then puts the bone back and then breaks the priest's arm and runs off. Okay. Also, when she does her little rise up in the corner thing, she is literally quoting God of the Bible. She's like, I am God. I visit the sins of the father upon the children. <laughs> and he's like, you're not God. And I was like, he sounds an awful lot like God. You want to double check that it's <laughs> yeah, not God? Yeah, yeah. God, God would have said that. Yeah, that is yeah. a totally God yeah, thing. He yeah. says that kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> So demon-possessed Ashley runs back into the woods. Tanya runs after her. My safe place! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, base, base. I'm on base. Can't, can't exercise me here. <laughs> now, Tanya comes... <laughs> Tanya's so fucking stupid. She comes across Ashley crying in the woods, and Ashley's like, 
Oh, Tanya, I just want to go home. Help me hold my mouth close to your face. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, Possessed Ashley and Heath at a certain all-you-can-eat establishment have very similar behaviors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the the priests show up, fucking demon, fucking Mike Tyson's Tanya's cheek or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, okay, we get this scene where, like, the younger priest has to drag Ashley back to the church. But what we're looking at is a priest dragging an underage girl into a church against her will. Yes. <laughs> I feel like they should be a little more aware of this kind of shit at this point. I mean, no, they sh they showed her upskirt like <laughs> that's, all bets are off. Yeah, I guess. Boston cop drives by. I'm not seeing this. I'm not yeah. seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> this is just how it's done here in pedophilia. This is a weird thing to see at the church on a Monday. <laughs> so, yeah. So old Reverend and Tanya show up like the priest drags her to the church. The old Reverend and Tanya show up afterwards, and by the time they get there, Tanya has strangled the young priest to death with his rosaries or something. But he looks less strangled and more sad that he's in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with four minutes and 10 seconds left, Tanya is outside the church the next day. She's calling Jordan. Remember Jordan? Of fucking course not. We only saw her in the 10 years ago opening scene. Yeah, I didn't have any idea who that was. Yeah, that's <laughs> Ashley's older sister who's in college. She's like, Jordan, you have to come home. Not sure why. I, 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 are you learning about demonic possession in that college of yours? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but then the old reverend comes to get her and he's like, hey, uh, since you're you know, kind of down with this whole demon possession thing. You want you want to see something cool? You want to see, you want to see my possession dungeon? <laughs> He's, and again, the twist of this movie that will now be revealed is that he has never succeeded in an exorcism and has an old-timey medieval-style prison filled with possessed teenagers. Yeah, right. So that that more important than he that he hasn't fixed, uh, uh, he hasn't actually completed an exorcism or succeeded in an exorcism is that his contingency plan is to lock those people away in a dungeon for the rest of their days. Yes. <laughs> and am I wrong in saying that they all look the same? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Were they all a white blonde girl? The yeah. demon has a type. The demon has a yeah. type. <gasps> no shit. And again, the like twist within a twist here is that he's like, hello, Kevin. And Kevin's like, brr, I'm the devil. And he's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> Ashley. Brr, I'm the devil. And then he's like, hello, <laughs> Sarah, huh? Uh, Her mom oh. was also possessed. Yep. Yeah. So I've <laughs> locked away this this woman for her entire life while I left her two children with an abusive drunk. <laughs> yep. Anyway, I'm the good guy. Movie's over. Anyway, <laughs> literally credits. <laughs> what? Literally credits, dude. But here's the thing. I stopped watching when the credits rolled. Apparently, I shouldn't have because, Rebecca, you found the true twist ending to this movie, right? Yes. Yes. Not in the credits in, in uh, the old Google. I took the Aunt Tanya route. Oh, right on. <laughs> yes. They're going to be making a sequel mm -hmm. to this movie. And it's currently being filmed in Georgia, this sequel. And along came the devil again. Or yeah, something. Right, right. <laughs> and all the proceeds will be donated to the anti-abortion heartbeat bill and to Stacey Abrams' Fair Fight Foundation. <laughs> Wouldn't like, have guessed that. What? Never would have guessed that. Would not and, have you guessed know, that. Should she take it? <laughs> because this is a you movie about pedophile. <laughs> like, yeah, right, right. Stacey's like, yeah, thanks, but... Uh, yeah, exactly. And also the proceeds... Like, all seventeen dollars from the sequel will be yeah. Give me a fucking proceeds. <laughs> Everyone proceeds. who buys that DVD we put in that car wash basement. Is gonna be <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait. I'm having so much trouble with this. Maybe you guys can help me out. What the fuck was the moral of this story? Right. I can't. I have no idea. Happy. There's. I mean, because usually in like in the possession movie, someone did something to get. 
No, no. Okay. <laughs> That's what I like about high school girls. I keep getting older and they stay the same amount of Age possessed. In my prison. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. All right. We'll go with it. All right. Well, Rebecca, I can't thank you enough, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't try. Thank you so much for suffering through uh, through this movie with us. And thanks for all that you bring to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. It was uh, not a pleasure. No, it <laughs> never. It never yeah. is. And, well, that is going to do it for our review of Along Came the Devil. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to earn the rent money for next week. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Doorways to Danger. I fucking hate October. <laughs> it's another documentary from those people who brought us the Satanic Panic documentary. Oh! Except it's about Halloween. Oh, this is okay. Now I'm happy. All right. Awesome. <laughs> well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 219 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Rebecca Vigil. And once again, a huge, maybe even huger thanks, I think, to all the Patreon donors that will help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make it a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Need and The Skeptic Ride, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Neil I. Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. The priest was discovered to have ties to Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Aunt Tanya went on to fuck a stuffed bear. <laughs> the devil went on keto for like a month. But then then he got off keto, gained all the weight back, That's and he's kind of sensitive about it. <laughs> Don't say anything. It's a really long one. <laughs> <laughs>